All right, welcome to um, Notes over Quantitative Notes, Part 1. Um, in these notes, we're going to learn about two equations to help us calculate thermal and phase changes. Uh, I call this Part 1 because we're just going to be working and focusing on the two equations that we're going to need to know um, for this test. Um, and then Part 2 is going to be adding all of those equations together to actually calculate an entire heat or cooling curve, okay? So first things first, let's talk about thermal, um, the thermal equation. So with the thermal equation, if you guys can remember when we talked about graphs, okay? Um, let's say you have water room temperature and it's at 25 degrees Celsius and we wanna, hit, we wanna heat it up to 50, okay? So let's say we have our glass of water Beaker of water, how are we, let's do beaker. That actually sounds a lot better. Beaker. Let's say we have a beaker and let's say we put on a balance and it was 50 grams. Okay, 50 grams of water. If we wanted to heat that up and we went from what, 25 to 50, from this line, this is considered a thermal, um, this is considered thermal energy. So here we would have an increase of thermal energy moving from 25 to 50. Now, was there any phase changes? Nope, it's still water from 25 to 50. Just here, um, we just have it being heated up, okay? Um, now, obviously, because we only see one line, we just need to calculate how much energy um, did it take to move from 25 to 50, and we are able to do that. So the equation that you guys are gonna learn today is called Q equals MC delta T. So Q is going to be how much energy was released. So how much heat was transferred. Um, generally, our units are going to be joules or kilojoules. Um, and just a kind of a reminder, there's a thousand joules in one kilojoule. But it's been a hot minute. We'll make sure you guys still remember that. Um, M, we've seen before, this is going to be the mass. Generally, it's going to be in grams. Um, I, may, I may make it fun and might put it in moles. Just kind of depends. I'll talk about C in just a second, but the last one is called delta T, um, the change in temperature. So delta T is always going to be T final minus T initial. Um, this will generally be units in Celsius you may see grams if you do, remembering that um, if you're trying to convert Celsius to uh, Kelvins, we add 273 to get us Kelvin, just in case you need a reminder. Um, but we're going to focus on C for just a second. So C is called the specific heat capacity. Okay, um, what's nice about this uh, specific heat capacity Every single element compound species in every single phase is going to have a value assigned to them, the specific heat capacity. So every um, species, and yes, it changes between solid, liquid, gas, all have a specific heat capacity. Um, What's nice about the specific heat capacity, it's considered a physical property for that element in that specific phase. Um, the actual definition is the quantity of heat or quantity of energy, generally in joules. So the quantity of energy in joules absorbed per unit of mass when the temperature increases by one degree Celsius. So what this means is this is the amount of energy if you have one gram of a substance, okay? So imagine, let's say we have an ice cube, okay? It's one gram. And it, let's say it's at negative 10 degrees and we want to go to negative nine degrees. So we wanna change it by one degree Celsius 
there is an, a, there is a energy value assigned to it in joules to let you know how much energy you would need to be able to do that. So here for water, um, for an ice cube actually is going to be a little bit different compared to liquid water. It's considered 2.14 um, water in the solid form. So here, if I have one gram of an ice cube and I want to change it by one degree Celsius, it would require 2.1 joules to make that happen. Um, kind of to help you kind of understand this, um, if you light a match and you have the match just chilling there, um, that's considered one joule of energy. So here, imagine two matches. That's able to change um, that one gram of ice um, by one degree Celsius, okay? Um, okay, so yes, this is for water in the solid form. One that we're going to use literally all the time is water in its natural form, um, which is 4.18 joules, okay? And so here, this is joules per gram Celsius, and up here, I should have wrote it all as well, okay? So that's how that notation would be. So again, heat capacity will be joules per gram Celsius. Yeah, you might see some changes to kilojoules per gram Celsius or joules per gram Kelvin. It just kind of depends. So if we go back up here, if we actually wanted to solve this using that equation, okay? So here I'm solving, um, ooh, my bad. So here we know mass is 50 grams. We know the heat capacity in its water, which I just told you is 4.18. Okay, and then delta T, which should be T final minus T initial. So here, our final temperature is going to be 50, okay? And our initial temperature is gonna be 25. So here, the change in temperature is 25. All we have to do is plug that into this wonderful equation. So here, Q equals 50 grams times 4.18 joules per gram Celsius. Uh, and just so you guys can see all of it out, I'm just going to rewrite the 50 minus 25. 50 minus 25, okay? And if you actually put that in your calculator, the answer is going to be 5,225 joules. Oh, why did I put equation? My bad. Q is going to be 5,225 joules. Okay. Which is, it's a lot of energy. And right now that seems like it's a lot. Um, but you have to realize we have hot plates. And that gives off so much energy to make that happen. Um, and so, yeah, that is basically the whole thermal equation um, to calculate this little line right here, okay? Now let's move on to the next type of energy. Okay, so here we're going to talk about phase changes energy. Okay, so let's say um, we have, I'm trying to think of an example. <laughs> okay, let's say we have that block of ice and we're trying to make it into water. That's supposed to be like a drop. That doesn't look good here. I'm just going to draw another beaker. There we go. So here, let's say we are at zero degrees Celsius, okay? And we had 10 grams of ice, and we're trying to convert it from um, solid, ice, solid uh, water to liquid water, okay? And we want to find out how much energy this is. So first, let's draw our graph. So here, we would just have a line like that, indicating solid to liquid, okay? So here, we're just trying to calculate that line. What's it going to be? What is that Q value just to make that line happen, okay? Um, so here, the equation, it's going to be a little bit different. Because if you recall, when we talked about um, phase changes, phase, phase energy, there should be no temperature change. So here... As a modification, we're not going to have delta T or anything to do with temperature in this case. So here, our equation ends up being Q equals M delta H, okay? 
Q again being energy, how much energy was needed generally in joules. Mass, as always, is going to be um, mass. Mass is going to be in grams. And this is called enthalpy. Okay. Enthalpy is super, super important. I don't want you to worry so much about, oh gosh, this thing called enthalpy. Um, we talk about a lot of it in AP Chem, um, but in Honors Chem, just know that this delta H basically helps us understand um, how much energy did it cost for that phase change to happen. So for every species, um, there's always going to be a delta H assigned to it. So again, this will be a physical property. We have two things. We have delta H of fusion. This allows it to go from a solid to liquid. Now here's the issue. The delta H is signed. So let's say we're talking about water. So water's delta H of fusion is going to be 336. My apologies, 334. Three, There's a lot of resources that say 333, 334, 35. 335, 336. We're going to do 334 for this class. Um, this is joules per gram. So here, this value, delta H effusion, this is how much it takes that amount of energy per one gram to convert uh, from it to be a solid to a liquid. Okay. Now you have to realize this is a positive value to make it go from a solid to liquid. Okay. Unfortunately, you are manually going to have to add that that symbol um, to indicate that it's going to be positive. And then if it wants to be a liquid to a solid, we have to manually put three, 334 joules per gram. Okay. So here's solid to liquids positive, liquid to solids negative. Next we have delta H of vaporization. And so here liquid to gas, always going to be positive, but gas to liquid is going to be negative. And so here, the delta H of vaporization for uh, water will be positive 2,260 uh, 2, joules per gram. And this is liquid to gas. But here, if we want to go gas to liquid, it'll be negative 2,260 joules per gram. Okay. Will you have to memorize these values? No. Will you have to manually put the positive or negative? Yes. So let me go back up here. So let's end up solving this problem, okay? So we, we, have, we have our mass, we have our delta H. So this is a positive graph because we're going from a solid to a liquid. So here, I'm gonna plug stuff in. 10 grams, multiply 334 joules per gram. Multiply those together, you get 3,340 joules, all right? Overall, not too bad, they're just equations and you'll be given all these values, okay? So let's try some examples so you fully understand it. All right, so I have a problem for you. Um, if you wanna actually pause the video and try this out yourself, you're more than welcome to. So we have 115 grams of solid lead and it is cooled from 330 degrees Celsius to 126 degrees Celsius. How much energy was released? So first thing first, I hope something popped in your head and you're like, ooh, released? That must mean that we're looking at something that's negative. Okay, um, the problems that we did prior, um, those values ended up being positive, like this was endothermic. And this one over here, where is it? Right here. This was endothermic. Things were being heated. The values for Q are positive. So here, we should be expecting a negative value, okay? But again, if you want to pause the video and try this out for yourself, please do, okay? All right, so assuming that you tried the video. Um, here, the fact that we have temperature involved, this tells me that we're going to be using this equation rather than the other one. So here, um, also one way to remember this is I think of M cat, like the M cat exam that helps you remember the equation. Okay, anyways, let's uh, let's solve for it. So here, mass is 115 grams. The heat capacity is 0 0.129 joules per gram Celsius. And then delta T will be 126 minus 330. So unlike the phase change before I solved this, we had to manually put that negative value for delta H. Thankfully, 
we will not have to do that for temperature change problems. Because if you look here, this negative for T final minus initial actually gives us the negative right then and there. So that's super nice that we don't have to do that. So let's get on to the answer. You should have gotten your answer as negative 3,026.34 joules, okay? All right, let's try one more. All right, so in this problem, you have 100 milliliters of ethanol and it's going to evaporate. How much energy was absorbed to have ethanol go from its liquid to gas form? So I gave you the delta H of vaporization, 837 joules per gram. Um, and then I gave you the density of ethanol. Okay, so pause the video and try this out yourself. Okay, assuming that you guys tried the video, um, first things first, because this is evaporation that we don't see temperature evolved, means we need to use this equation. Now, one thing that's going off in your head, hopefully, is that you notice, uh-oh, we don't have a mass, but we are given density. So hopefully you remember D equals M over V. If you were like, this last sir, kind of forgot it, you got to remember it, okay? Um, but here we are given the delta H, so we are good to go. Just here we need to solve for what M is, okay? So here I'm going to plug everything into the density equation. So here I have 0 0.789 grams per milliliter. I'm solving for mass, and the volume is 100 milliliters. So here we're going to only need to, uh, the mass ends up being 78.9 grams, okay? Because we're actually going to multiply those two values together. So 100 times 0.789. Right, now that we have our mass, I'm going to plug this in to our equation. So here, Q equals 78.9 grams multiply by 837 joules per gram. We should end up getting our value as 66,039.3 joules, okay? And the next lesson we're gonna learn about doing them multiple times in the same um, question.